everyone, welcome back. I have Dean Leichner here. He is going to be talking about how to supplement your realtor business with investment properties. Hi, Dean. Hi there. Hi, how's it going? It's going good. Good, thanks for joining us. So last minute here, I know uh, we kind of just threw something together, but uh, happy to have you here. Um, so why don't you introduce yourself to the team and kind of let us know a little bit about yourself and uh, how you got into real estate. Sure. Yeah, my name, uh, as Kristen said, is Dean Leishner, and I currently own and manage a portfolio uh, scratching at 20, uh, $29 million in and around uh, central Alberta. So uh, I joined CIR as a realtor about a year ago um, in order to expand my business uh, from a cash flow perspective, bringing on uh, third party uh, property management as, as a partner of CIR, which has been going great so far over the last year. Yeah, that's awesome. And most of your properties are currently located in Red Deer, right? Yeah, they are Red Deer and surrounding areas, Sylvan Lake, Innisfail, and um, uh, some stuff in the cold. Yeah, and um, the goal ultimately was to start diving into the Calgary market, but you just have all of your experience so far, and all of your personal properties as well are in, are in Red Deer. Correct, yeah. It's... Uh, it, I, I would like to tap into the Calgary market just because it's it's much larger and, uh, you know, there, there's opportunity here as well. So tell us just very quickly how you just started your business. Um, you know, you said to me before that you started before you were even a realtor and you got into real estate after the fact. What made you do that in the first place? Yeah, um, great question. It's so... In 2010 is when I opened my company, and uh, it basically started off with one property. So I approached my dad and said, "Hey, Dad, I want to do a, I want to buy some property. Can you give me some money?" So uh, he said, "Yeah." We bought the first one. We renovated it. It went great. Bought a second one. So we refinanced the first one, which I still have today. Bought a second one. Friends saw what I was doing. Uh, were interested started the conversation with them and uh, they invested and then friends of friends and now close business acquaintances. And it's just kind of growing, you know, exponentially over the last 10 years. Uh, I was working full time at WestJet uh, 10 years ago and, and that just got to be too much trying to balance between two worlds. So quit there and went after real estate full time and haven't really looked back. And, uh, Two years ago, two and a half years ago, I got my real estate license. And uh, then, like I had mentioned, partnered with CIR a year ago. And uh, that's allowed me to bring on about 100 additional units, uh, which we call, you know, third property stuff uh, to me because I have no ownership stake in it. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's been going great as well. That's awesome. So, so when you're dealing with investors, how do you find a properly qualifying multifamily building for them. So yeah, that, that is a little tricky because uh, it's it's tough to set these property values um, because there's most of the stuff isn't listed on the MLS. So it's it's either pocket listings or uh, you know private people who don't want their their heirloom or their you know 1974 asset that has never been on the MLS to be listed. So it comes down to trying to ascertain the cap rate for the or the capitalization, capitalization rate, and uh, making sure that, you know, balanced against net operating income that this building is priced correctly. And if it's not, informing the seller that uh, their price is wrong. Right, so how do you do that quick level analysis? So it, that analysis is basically done by uh, ascertaining the net operating income of the structure. So all the free cash after all the, all the bills are, are paid, excluding mortgage. So all uh, utilities and property tax and all of that. And then you divide it by the cap rate for the area, um, which usually is set. It's, it's set by a bunch of different things. So it's set by institutions. It's set by recent sales of the buildings. It's set by uh, the appraisal industry, 
um, for for a cap, whether you know in Calgary it's anywhere from two to four percent. So you divide the NOI by the cap rate, and that magically gives you a ballpark building value. Awesome, amazing. So then, so how do you pool your investors for these larger purchases? How do you do that? How do you find them? Yeah, you know, there's there's a couple of schools of thought around that, um, but the way that I do it is start socializing the deal. You find some people with a lot of cash. You find some people with not much cash, cash, and uh, and then you the the best way to do it, in my opinion, is to spin up a corporation, so a brand new corporation with no tax or legal liabilities, and then uh, divvy out the shares according. Divvy out the shares and divvy out the debt according to um, how much that person brings into the investment. So, so that debt would be proportionate to the um, shares that they're issued because of the cash that they're contributing to the deal. And, and typically what I do in those deals is uh, all the cash partners that come bring 65% uh, or have 65% of the um, of the of the deal, and then I take thirty five percent on the back end of whatever whatever I can make for us over the course of the next three to five years. Right. So there there are main differences between the classes of buildings. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, there's uh, there's class A buildings, class B, and class C. Uh, in my opinion, class C are the best buildings to buy, even though they're the oldest and they're the most amount of work, but there's the biggest potential for uplift on those buildings. So a class C building uh, would be something, you know, in a, you know, not a war zone area, but a rougher part of town that is probably 1960s, 1970s vintage that has issues with the tenants or issues with um, maybe not the major mechanical systems, but uh, could use some uh, spruce up in the common areas and uh, spruce up in the tenant units. So that's kind of a class C and then a class A would be, you know, an immaculate building in a great area of town that's pulling, uh, pulling top rents and then, you know, be somewhere in the middle between those two. Right. So when you're talking about class C, what do you recommend to your investors? Are you looking at each unit individually? Are you looking at the building structurally? Does it depend on the building? What are you looking for in terms of turning that property into a higher income generating? So without uh, giving away all my secrets, um, (laughs) basically you look at what that building is producing now and what it could potentially produce with cosmetic enhancements. And, uh, there's, there's not a lot of value der- derived from window replacements or uh, mechanical system replacements because that's not going to increase the rent at all. It's The main goal is to try and increase the rent on the complex in order for the net operating income to go up. And uh, then, you know, dividing it against the cap rate, your building's worth more money. So it's, it's all based on uh, income. So then how do you get that... How do you get past that price? Like, how do you how do you explain this to them and, and make that make sense for them? Uh, the what do you mean exactly? The owner or the? So how do you help the seller get past the price they feel the building is being valued at? And then how do you help the buyer to understand what needs to be done in yeah. order to make this an, a good income generating property? Or maybe maybe they've never purchased anything before and they have no idea. Yeah, that's a great question. So, so as a realtor, um, it's basically understanding how these buildings operate and producing uh, a profit and loss statement uh, if one isn't already available to show the seller exactly what this building is producing and how it's valued according to the bank and how it's valued according to an appraiser. And uh, really, it comes down to educating your buyer. Um, so that they know exactly what they have instead of, you know, back in, you know, t- five years ago or six years ago, it was worth X amount of dollars. Well, you know, it's a different market now and it's not worth that anymore. So it, it comes down to uh, properly educating your buyer or uh, properly educating the buyer and the seller. Interesting. So, so you're saying that you're 
Exactly. So if someone wants to get a hold of you for more information or just wants help with maybe they have a buyer or a seller, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah, they can get a hold of me uh, through my CIR address or they can uh, call me directly. Um, yeah, I, do you want my phone number? Or? <laughs> I mean, are you like you should be on our Facebook page if people want to reach out and things like that. So awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions for Dean, please reach out, and um, we hope you enjoyed this little quick information session. Um, Dean, like I said, is with CIR. He is also one of our independent property managers, so he looks after. Um, like he said, the multifamily units in uh, Red Deer and surrounding area. So he is part of the property management division, which is awesome. Uh, thanks again, Dean, for joining us and uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. Yeah, you too.